Today on Applied Science, I'd like to talk about an interesting manufacturing technique to create custom rubber parts. So here's the end result of this process. Uh, it's basically just a, a piece of black rubber, neoprene I think, and as you can see it has a step feature in here. So if you're repairing something or prototyping, you might need a custom shaped part like this, and normally they're pretty difficult to produce. Industrially, parts like this would be made by injection molding or even casting. But if you only need one part, it may not be uh, you know, economically feasible to do that. So the next best thing would be to machine the part. But the problem with that, of course, is if you try to machine a piece of rubber, as you can see, the cutter just pushes the material away. Instead of actually slicing through the material, it just uh, pushes. So the idea with this cryogenic machining technique is to freeze the rubber so that instead of behaving like a soft material like this, if you get it cold enough, it will behave more like a piece of plastic, and then we can actually cut it and make a, a chip uh, just like a hard material. Here's the setup. I've got an ultra-low temperature freezer on the ground next to my milling machine, and there's a pump with a hose that brings the coolant, which is alcohol in this case, up to the cutting area, and then another hose that drains back to the uh, tank in the freezer. The freezer maxes out at just over negative 100 degrees C, uh, however, the coolant temperature is probably more in the neighborhood of negative 60 to negative 80. So you don't actually need a uh, cryogenic freezer to do this. You just need a bucket with dry ice and some alcohol, and you'll get very similar temperatures. I built a small coolant capture tray uh, that's suspended above my CNC milling table. This is so that I don't have to chill the entire milling machine, and I used plastic spacers to try to provide as much thermal insulation as possible. When thinking of ways of clamping the rubber down to the aluminum plate, I thought it would be very uh, useful to use water. So I could put a little bit of water between the rubber and the aluminum plate and then freeze it and have the ice hold it in place. And in fact, there's a commercial product, uh, of course, called the ice vise that's made specifically for freezing things and holding them on milling machines. Uh, the difference is that the ice vise is basically just a block of metal that gets cold. And the way that I'm going to try to do this is to flood the entire cut area with super chilled alcohol. So, you know, what happens is the alcohol dissolves the ice and then it carries it away and there's no more ice holding down the part. And I thought it would be such a slow process that you could easily get, you know, 10 minutes worth um, to get a cut done. But as it turns out, no, it only takes like one or two minutes for the alcohol to wash away enough ice where the thing doesn't grip anymore. Originally, I tried to cut a silicone gasket, and this didn't work because the silicone actually doesn't become firm enough at these low temperatures. Uh, silicone is too good of a performer, or it performs too well at low temperatures, and so the rubber was still soft enough where the, the machine wouldn't cut it. So I switched over to neoprene, and that actually is uh, perfectly machinable at these low temperatures. I ended up adding some simple quarter 20 bolts uh, to hold the piece down uh, and act as very simple clamps, and this works just fine. I also had a problem with the pump. Originally I used a submersible aquarium pump and just dunked it in the super chilled alcohol, and after a minute or two this, the pump stopped working and I even noticed bits of plastic breaking off and, and cracking, so that wasn't going to cut it. Uh, luckily I had an external pump that is magnetically driven, so the chamber of this pump is sealed or it's separate from the motor and driven through a magnet coupling. Uh, but then the problem was this pump wasn't self-priming, and so I had to get a funnel out and prime it. But anyway, once I got the whole coolant system working, it was actually pretty easy to use. This part was cut with the end mill that was just laying around in my uh, end mill box, so not typically that sharp. This is a brand new end mill, and as you can see, the, the surface finish and uh, cut quality is quite a bit better. Um, I cut this in climb milling so that the part that I wanted to save was climb milled and this part was conventional milled. And as it turns out, it looks like the finish on the conventionally milled piece is actually even better. So there's probably a lot of room to experiment to get as good of a surface finish as possible. I use speed and feed parameters that are typical of cutting soft plastics, so a pretty high chip load and relatively low RPMs to keep the, um, the rubber from becoming soft at the cutting point. I hope you found that interesting. See you next time. Bye.